What's up guys, John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle. Today I want to cover a very important topic about nonverbal communication, otherwise known as subcommunication. Okay, a lot of you might have heard that verbal words, like the actual content of what you're saying, makes up a very small percentage of our communications. Okay, so there was a guy named Dr. Albert Morabian, okay, and he found through a series of studies that communication is 55% body language, okay, that's using your arms when you're speaking, your facial expressions, etc. okay, 38% is the way that you sound, okay, your voice and your tone, your intonation, etc. and 7%, only 7% is your actual spoken words content, okay? So what I want to do is go through a field report, which is basically a write-up of a series of game situations uh, that I wrote personally uh, back on the forums. This was October 2012. I was about at 130 lay count, been with 130 girls nearly five years ago. But... This is about an experience in Beijing, China. Okay, only 10% of people speak English there. So I was left without my spoken words. Okay, and I'm, I'm recounting some success in this report and going over how subcommunication aided me in that process. And, and this showcases the importance. Okay, so before we continue, please like and subscribe below. Press the notification bell so you get notified of new videos Sunday through Thursday. Okay. Coming up this Thursday, we have a roast of Michael Squat and Casanova, okay, an Asian coach based in Vegas. If you have taken programs with him, please email me, johnanthonylifestyle at gmail.com. I will keep you anonymous, but I already have plenty to talk about. Okay, so I'll jump right into this review or this uh, field report. Um, so I'll, I'll just I'll just read through some of it here, and then I'll I'll, I'll analyze and discuss with you guys. Okay, so. So I said, so I've been in Beijing this past week for work travel. My subcommunication has really been put to the test since most of the girls don't speak English. I fucked two dimes. Okay, that's code word for stunners. Okay, girls are like above a nine. And an eight using no words. I also only went out one night. I had two clubs on a Saturday. Okay, so number one. On this night out, I rolled up on a dime and just acted like the man. So I start dancing with this chick, giving her the icy eyes and just being the man. All right. So when you're like dancing with a chick, all that shit, you're not fucking saying shit anyways, even if even if they do speak English. Right. And I don't recommend going to everyone's like, how do you do dance game? How do, what do I do for dance game? I think dance game is stupid. Normally you want to because the chick is ADD distracted on the dance floor and the venue is fucking like that's where the loudest point is. All right. So that's not a good place to game a chick. But in this situation, I'm just kind of giving her like the confidence I'm in charge. Like what, what a quick point that ties in here that I just thought of, I can play a game with hot chicks that I'm walking around with where we like point to a dude and within like half a second, you know, like, is he a pussy or is he not a pussy? Is that a cool dude or is it not a cool dude? You size it up very quickly. He doesn't need to say shit. You can just tell by the way he's carrying himself. Okay. So, um, so I, I wrote here, I would, I would just make a gesture with my thumb like typing into an imaginary, oh, okay. I number closed eight girls this night, all with, with no words. I would just make a gesture with my thumb, like typing into an imaginary phone, right? Like that's how I'd number close. I'd be like, kind of like looking at them all sexual, dancing a little bit, and I'd be like, you know, motioning, like I wanna get her phone number. Um, and I was actually writing numbers down on a pen and paper. I think I didn't have a fucking <laughs> Chinese SIM card. So keep in mind that in China, and this is according to my colleagues who live, who live here, Girls rarely have one night stands or date multiple guys or do random hookups. They're all about the boyfriend girlfriend bullshit. So I had the deck stacked against me. One of the girls spoke poor English. That was in the group with the dime. So I set up the logistics with her. All right. I showed her my hotel card and I typed drinks. Okay. Out on her phone, pointed at her really hot friend. The girl typed back to her friend wants to come with me, but she's afraid because she doesn't know me. Okay. That's another Chinese thing. They like to travel in groups when seeing a guy that is a stranger for safety reasons. I said, fuck it, let them all come along. Okay, so it was a group poll back to my hotel. I went over the whole group with different fun body language and being 
silly and ridiculous. <laughs> like I would get in pictures with them, make funny faces, do stupid dancing, whatever the fuck I wanted. I made out with the dime in the car while her sister was sitting right next to us. Okay, we get back to the hotel room. You can you can imagine the size of hotel rooms are small. Uh, basically, I isolate the dime to the bathroom and fuck her brains out. She's super loud while her sister and her friend just sit on the bed and they didn't cock block. I mean, it's like a passive culture. Okay, so that was girl number one. There's three different girls here that I discuss. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, there's a lesson. Like, I, ba I basically just ran the logistics through the friend that spoke really shit English, won over the friend without communicating with her in, in, in words at all. And then she knew what was going to happen if we went back to the place. Okay, I just did what I had to do to arrange the logistics. I had to make it a group poll because the friends were, you know, being protective. It's a cultural thing. Okay, so girl number two. Uh, this was the 8 out of 10. This girl was working at a shop. I just, I fucked her a bunch, did a lot of body language flirting. And I bit my lip and pointed at her and then me. So kind of like, you're looking at the chick and you're kind of like, like and raising eyebrows. Okay, basically saying I want to fuck you without saying jack shit. Then I held my hands out like, what do you say? So I'm just kind of like, right? And so th this is the, the point of, the point of recounting this stuff is like, you're, conveying so much shit con with without saying anything contrast this to guys that are you know just standing in the interaction and they're just kind of like blah 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 okay what should i say next okay what cool fancy thing can i do next etc cetera, etc cetera. it's all just flat and negative and boring okay so make sure you're being expressive with your facial expressions with your body language make sure you're varying your, your voice tone and your intonation okay make sure when you're expressing ranges of emotions you're getting excited about stories you're getting offended or showing disapproval when she's non-compliant or giving you a hard time or disrespecting you. Um, you know, you're, la you're, you're cracking ridiculous jokes and laughing your ass off, etc. cetera. So, <clears throat> um, so I, I held my hands. I was like, what do, you, what do you say kind of body language? She gave some token resistance, which is nonverbal. It's kind of like, the, you know, I don't remember exactly, what, but I just wrote it was nonverbal token resistance. I kept up persistence in, in building compliance. When I got her to agree, I gave her a paper with my hotel address on it and wrote down my room number. I pointed at my watch and made a motion like, when are you done? Like some kind of shit like, you know, what time are we meeting? She pointed at the, at the two on my watch. So I pointed the two and then pointed at the hotel address on the paper and then raised my eyebrows and nodded. Like, come here and fuck me after you get off work. I don't remember exactly how I went, but kind of like something like that. She nodded and smiled and then she came and then I banged her. So number three, out of three, for these stories here, the third girl, the other dime, very proud of this. This was actually a date from one of the Saturday night number closes. So I had my Chinese colleague arrange logistics. Okay, so I was having him do that over the phone. The girl wanted to meet halfway since she was a 40 minute cab right away. I answered that objection by telling him to text her that I would get lost in the city since I don't know Chinese and to meet at my hotel bar. Okay, she wanted to bring a friend since it was a long journey and she didn't know me, normally, you know, when I, when I teach dates 101, it's a big no-no for them to bring a friend. It just fucks logistics because the friend is going to cock block because she's going to be bored, okay? So, um, but I, I agreed because it's another fucking cultural thing and I had my Chinese colleagues, so I was hope I wrote here, I, was, I agreed, hoping my Chinese colleague could block the obstacle and help translate. Turns out he had dinner plans with a friend, but I had the bitches come anyways. <laughs> it's October 2012. Nothing has changed. I get my laptop with fucking Google Translate pulled up so I can communicate with these bitches, at least for logistics. For those of you watching, I have, I have a bunch of like female fuck buddies and friends and stuff that watch this channel now. No, I do not uh, mean bitches in a derogatory sense. I mean it as a, a pronoun for women, as Snoop Dogg does. So, um, let's see. I wanted to be able to tell them to go back to my room in a more finesse way than with pure body language. That's why I had Google Translate up. So the dime arrived solo, which was sweet. Never found out why the friend didn't come along. We go and sit in the hotel bar at a table, which is kind of an open display of all the other tables. The reason that's relevant is all these people were watching us have a conversation back and forth with my Google Translate and a translation app on her phone to translate Chinese into English. The subcommunication was still ruling shit. The translated shit was just aiding and showing I was confident, unreactive. It was allowing me to bust on her a little, flirt. 
uh, I wrote false disqualify a little push pull. I don't I don't do stupid shit like that anymore. And I, and I don't think I was doing that as tactics. It was just a way to label certain types of communication. It was hilarious because I, it was like running online game, even though she was sitting right in front of me. Most of the shit she typed was super IOI. She kept telling me I have the best personality. I'm so interesting, handsome, blah, blah, blah. I told her she is the prettiest girl I have seen in Beijing. And she was so flattered, but shy at the same time. So I busted on her for being shy. I told her she's so lucky to have met a handsome American man. All right. Now, <laughs> now a lot of that shit, like I'm not saying it like, like all serious, like, like, oh, you are really fortunate because I, I really think I'm a handsome guy. All this stuff is playful and fun, right? Now, one of her messages was, how are you so confident? Smiley face. <laughs> that was how the translation came. Uh, and then I wrote, nothing against the Asian males, but it's probably safe to say in general that their culture is causing them to be hardcore chodes, you know, more on the shy reserve side. So these bitches aren't used to being dominated or led. I'd had a picture. That's kind of a phenomenon. Like I lived in Ukraine, even in, in Warsaw. Like, like if the if the culture of the, like the men that live there is like shy, reserved, kind of beta, passive. It's like this giant. Like it's like the first time they're meeting an alpha dude. Sometimes when you when you meet girls in these cultures, um, because just because they're not used to it. Because most dudes are being like a, a huge pussy, and so you you like serve as like stark contrast. Like like the, I'm in Poland now, and the girls are always like. Yeah, the guys are like so serious and so negative on the dates, whereas I'm just like being like completely not whatsoever serious almost the entire time and saying like ridiculous vulgar shit. Um, okay, so I had had a picture taken during a tour of the Forbidden City of me and Emperor's clothes. This was my ticket back to the room. I told her I wanted her to see the the picture because it's very funny. Okay, so once back in my hotel room, I told her I wanted to kiss her. She refused. Typed out Chinese girls are not so open. This was. Her token resistance, but also culturally ingrained. Her objections were basically that she would want to see me many more times before we kissed. If she kissed, if she kissed me and I'm leaving soon, that she'll be let down, etc. And probably also feel slutty about it. I told her that I would take time to see her many more times, but that I was leaving, leaving, so we had no choice. All right, that's another thing you can say. Like, no, now, now I've adapted with, with more Machiavellian, Machiavellian dark triad type tactics where now even if I'm in a, a country or a foreign city for like a, a night I'll say like I just moved there for work and I'm going to be living there I never say I'm a tourist anymore because that that makes the chick have to like buy into like okay this is gonna be a one-night stand if you, if you say you're just visiting then a lot of times they'll hold that against you and, and it'll cock block you okay um so I, I told her that I, I'd like to take the time to see her many more times, but that I'm leaving, so we had no choice. I told her, so you're kind of like making a special exception rule for herself. I told her I understand she is a polite lady. Okay, again, that's disarming. The So she doesn't look at herself as a slut or doesn't think I'm judging her as a slut. But she needs to make an exception and have an adventure. I told her she may never get to see me again. So she was still giving me all the body language cues that it was on, so I persisted. I told her in America we have something called Eskimo kissing. Had her do that with me. That seemed to turn her on as her breathing got heavier. Then I told her via Google Translate to look me in the eyes and tell me what she feels. She replied with her Translate app that she felt I was handsome. <laughs> Basically seated that down in the hotel bar. I replied, tell me how you feel in your heart. I basically just got up in her face with ultra icy eyes. eyes fuck, I fucking the shit out of her to an extreme degree and watched her body move up and down as her breathing increased. Then I went for the makeout. She got super into it. She went for my dick pretty quick, which was surprising. I'll spare all the details, but I fucked her in every position that I could possibly think of, and it was probably one of the top five best sex sessions I've ever had. And that was at 130 lay count about five years ago. So there's been many more amazing ones since. That beat that, even though that one was awesome. She was a solid Asian dime piece. She's coming back tonight because I leave town tomorrow. Then I have the first dime piece as a repeat in the morning. I basically built a mini rotation with stunners without speaking. That's why I'm going through these fucking long-winded reports. Without speaking the fucking language is what I wrote in all caps. Granted, I used some text translate shit back and forth for the second time, but that was mainly for logistics and busting through resistance and setting a sexual frame. Most of the attraction was in my subcommunication. So <clears throat> I hope that was like a good window into how powerful this, this shit can be in terms of 
your verbal or sorry your your voice tone and your body language okay and how, and how your actual words are so guys place way too much emphasis on the words like like a, a common question that i see in the forums and the, my clients ask me oh what do i what do i say in the open what do i say what do i say what do i say it doesn't really fucking matter like that's why i say whatever comes to mind you're using your verbals as like a tool to sexualize things to determine logistics to set up the frame that you guys are going to hang out afterwards etc but being able to express with body language, being able to have facial tones, being able to look at her like this when she doesn't comply, being able to fucking say some sexual thing and bite your lip and like nudge her, all that shit speaks way more volumes in terms of the overall communication. <laughs> no pun intended, speaks volumes. Uh, than the actual words. Okay, and the stats one more time, 55% of communication is body language, 38% is your voice and your tone, 7% is spoken words. Okay. Hope this was helpful. Make sure you like and subscribe below. If you found value, actually go and do it. Press like. I've been watching Athlean and X's channel about bodybuilding and shit. And he, he always pops up a, a thing like halfway through the video. Like if you're enjoying the content, press like right now. Like because on YouTube, we'll show it to more people and all these things like compound into, into growing the channel and stuff like that. So make sure you are getting in the habit of liking my shit and subscribe if you have not already. If you do enjoy it, don't just do it because I tell you to. Thank you, guys. Uh, I will try to get you an infield footage breakdown uh, tomorrow on Wednesday. And then Thursday we have the roast of Michael Squatton Casanova, who claims that 100% of his boot camp students get laid on program. Yes, 100%. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys on the next couple of videos. Thank you. <laughs>